Hi, I'm Montana York, your Cambridge House host, and I'm joined today by the one and only Kai Hoffman, CEO of Soar Financial Partners. Kai, thank you for being here. Fantastic. Thanks for inviting me on the program. Of course. Um, Kai, as someone with 10 years experience consulting in the industry, what is catching your eye on the market right now? Now, that's a good question. It's it's, it's multifold because it's it, you got to look what the market wants. Sentiment is a bit off right now. So pure gold plays, for example, are not something I'm looking for right now, unless of course there's exceptional uh, drill drill history or like exceptional drill results pending that where you assume exceptional drill results are pending. Uh, but I'm more looking at copper gold, like larger porphyry projects right now, because I think that's what the market demands right now. So copper gold, obviously copper is in everybody's mouth right now, is the theme I'd say in the junior mining sector right now with the EV trends happening. Bad battery metals and I think it is the number one battery metal in, in general and we don't have enough of it so if you look at any of the, the, the supply and demand forecasts we're definitely going to run into a deficit and we need a lot more new copper to actually satisfy the growing demand for EVs batteries what what name you so that that's what I'm looking at and I think the market is, is telling me the same story if you see like a phyllo mining for example that story has just exploded because the market is looking for those stories and the share price has just benefited from it tremendously and of course I'm trying to find something like i don't want to say like a philo because it'll be very 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 tough to replicate <laughs> that but even if it's a quarter of that i think that'd be a tremendous success for a junior mining company and those are the ones i might be like or i'm actually looking for right now cool and i hear that you are looking for companies does that mean that you are currently deploying capital into the market I am. I am. Not as much as maybe others or so. Like, I like doing private placements. Uh, I rarely buy in the markets because I'm not a trader. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a hodler. That's the new term, apparently, <laughs> that everybody's using. Um, so I buy private placements. I, I like warrants. As an investor, I like warrants, of course. Uh, from a company perspective, like, you don't like issuing warrants. But as an investor, I do like I, I do like them. Uh, I get positioned there. I don't have to worry about it. I'm usually I'm locked up for four months. That keeps me in there as well. So definitely works well with my no trade strategy. <laughs> um, so if I look at my portfolio right now, actually, it's a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say victims are there, but a lot of companies that have held for years now, um, because because I still believe in the story, actually, and I think it will play out and we're in a very high gold price environment right now. Um, at some point, they will catch a bit and I'll, I'll, uh, it should do well. So that's, yeah, so I'm deploying capital, short answer. Amazing. Thank you so much. And then I heard mention of your portfolio. Do you mind letting us take a little peek in there right now? Yeah, it's like I've... The, Solid mix, I'd say. It's like solid is relative, like depending on um, how you look at it. So it's it's a fairly high risk portfolio. So personally, I don't own any blue chip stocks. You might call me crazy, so I don't own any of the Metas, Alphabets, um, and Amazons of the world. So I, it's pretty much junior mining and developers. I don't own even any of the larger producers because uh, I see that's where the most torque is and that's where um, I can generate the returns I'm looking for. That's where I can play my advantage. I've been in, the, as you said, over 10 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. I think March 1st is 11 years. And uh, if you add the, the time before I started Soar Financial to that as well, so I think it's 13 years or something like that. Uh, that, that that's my advantage. I know the junior mining sector. I think I have a decent gut feeling. I'm not a geologist or an engineer, um, but working with companies knowing what's going on being fairly well connected in the scene as well um, th that's where I feel comfortable so my mix is I have quite a few developers um, companies that will go into production in the next 12 18 months a uh, couple more later stage uh, exploration companies on the verge of being explored but also some early stage juniors companies that just listed for example I love pre IPO financings I love like looking at those if the valuation is right uh, out of the gate so it, I, I'd say that's what I call a solid mix um, <laughs> but of course if you look from a different perspective you probably uh, you know hit your forehead with your hand and this is like well where's the rest where's the diversification but for me i think that's fairly diversified amazing any particular companies that are catching your eye anything you'd like to share yeah, it's like I've, I've been looking at quite a few stocks that uh, have tremendously underperformed. So I definitely have some stocks in there that I'm under quite a bit underwater, and I'm just looking right now whether I should load up more on it because I think a lot of them had just did not have the news flow. That has various reasons. It's either not lapse delivering, but also maybe not um, pulling the trigger on th on certain projects and working on that. And that might be changing. So a couple names I'm looking at right now is like an Angold, for example. Um, I'm in there at 35 cents. The stock's trading at 16 and a half now, and only because it's up. 30% today. Um, so 
definitely underwater on that point. But that's an interesting one, a good example of how little news flow can affect the story. And I think there's a lot more stories like that out there. Um, Black Wolf Copper and Gold, for example, is one as well. Still waiting for summer drill results from their project in Alaska. Uh, and th those are opportunities. I'm not, I don't know how those results will look. I haven't seen any core or anything, obviously. Um, so that's ultra high risk. And uh, But that's where the fun is as well. And there are quite a few more stories like that out there. And uh, that, that's what I'm looking at. And those are sort of the tips I have. Um, maybe on the contrary, there's quite a few cult stocks out there right now. And I, I see that on Twitter, uh, a bit like the meme stocks that we had uh, in like during that uh, AME or AMC and uh, GameStop run as well. And, and one advice I have there is just don't forget to sell when you made money on those. So uh, that's maybe tips and in investing since we're uh, supposed to be attracting some newbie investors here. Hopefully, um, <laughs> let's uh, just a word of warning as well. This is it's not a one way street. Right. So besides getting out on time uh, and selling when you make money, do you have any other tips for junior investors? Soak up all the information that is out there, actually. It's like there's so much now. COVID really accelerated the trend of information distribution. Um, what we're doing right now actually is the perfect example. Soak up those interviews. There are a lot more experts, a lot, maybe even better experts um, th than me that you just follow. There. Just listen to them and build your own like opinions. Like Twitter is tre tremendous. Just make sure you follow the right people. Um, you'll have to find that out yourself who they are. But uh, there's tremendous value in that. And use that information to your advantage. And uh, if you don't do it, it's a, it's your loss. Amazing. And then if people wanted to find you, where would they find you? Yeah, so ideally, uh, Twitter, I think, is the best way to do it. Uh, we use at uh, Soar Financial or at uh, JR Mining Guy as well. That's my personal handle on Twitter now. I just set that up a few weeks ago uh, as well. So just feel free to reach out anytime. Happy to answer any questions. Amazing. And then do you mind just sharing what Soar Financial does? Yeah, so originally we started out as a PR company. We still do quite a bit, but we've transitioned more into the virtual world. And uh, we, we do quite a few live interviews. So I interview pretty much on a daily basis CEOs in the mining sector. Um, that gives me also a good understanding of what is going on and uh, fairly well connected in the space. So we connect investors with companies and uh, just having the pulse on the market and uh, trying to share good ideas. Amazing. Thank you so much, Guy. Fantastic, Montana. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.